In the previous video, we took a deep dive into exactly how and why the Voronoi texture gives such outputs. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to create the texture that I used for the background of the intro and outro of the video. So we'll be creating this particular animation loop. And with that, let's go ahead and figure out how we did it. In our default scene, we're going to go ahead and tap X to delete the default cube, after which we'll press Shift A and search for a mesh plane. Now. The plane doesn't have to be scaled to anything specific. Let's just scale it up by five units by pressing S followed by five and then enter. Then we'll select our camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, and then G Z to lift it up on the Z axis by an arbitrary amount. Now we can press zero on our numpad to go into the camera view, after which we can press G Z once again and just move it until we have approximately the entire square or the entire plane fit within our actual camera view. Now let's go to our camera properties, go down to viewport display and increase pass par 2 all the way to 1. Now we're going to actually start with the material of the plane. So we're going to go ahead and change our viewport shading to rendered so that we can actually see what we're doing. And we're going to select the default light and tap delete to remove it. Then we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and then change this from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. Then we'll tap N to remove this side panel and then we can select the plane and start messing around with the actual material. Now, first off, we're gonna have to either create a new material by pressing this new button or we can use the default material because we're not using that for anything else. Now let's go ahead and delete the principled PSDF because we're not gonna need it. We're going to be using an emission shader, but we'll start off by creating the texture before putting that into an emission shader. So let's press Shift A and search for a Voronoi texture. Again, if you want a deep dive into every single output and every single property along with all of the different inputs, you can check out my previous video that's linked to the top right corner right now where we take a deep dive into exactly how this node works. Now let's go ahead and just press Ctrl T to add in a texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Let's switch over from generated to object and then just shift all of these a bit to the side. Now we're going to switch this from F1 to smooth F1 and we're going to select it and press shift D to create a duplicate. Now the duplicate can be the normal F1 and we want to find the difference between these two Voronoi textures. So let's press shift A, search for a math node and change this from add to subtract. Now let's subtract the smooth F1 from the original F1. So let's plug this in and just control shift click this to preview what we're getting. Now that clearly doesn't look right. So let's go ahead and flip these over by shifting the smooth F1 to the top socket and the F1 to the bottom socket. Now we're still not getting the same thing because the vector input is not connected to this other Voronoi texture. Let's plug that in and then switch this back to how it was originally. So this is the basis of our effect. Now we want just these edges to actually light up. So we're going to do that by using another math node and we're going to use a compare value. So let's press shift D, plug it in there and then change this from subtract to less than. So once we switch it to less than, we have to choose a threshold value. So let's just reduce this threshold till we get something that looks organic and nice. Something like that looks great. Now the next thing is we don't want this to be the entire object. We just want the outer rim. So to create the outer rim, we're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to make them a bit smaller and then multiply the two. So let's go ahead and just duplicate this entire section. So let's select all of them, press Control Shift D so that we get the duplicates with the links already created. And remember to keep all of these links, you have to have your Node Wrangler enabled. So ensure you go to your Edit Preferences, Add-ons and Enable Node Wrangler. Now, when we Control Shift click this, you'll see we get the exact same thing. What we now can do is just reduce this threshold a little bit more so that the actual shapes become a little bit smaller. So maybe we can go with 0 0.09 while this is 0 0.110. Next, let's press Shift A and search for another math node and then switch this from add to multiply. Now, essentially, when we multiply these, we actually want this to be completely black. So we're going to invert this. And the way we can invert it is by pressing Shift A and searching for an invert node. Now, this is going to be an invert color node. You don't necessarily need this. You could technically do this with another math node, but it's not really worth the hassle for now. We can just convert these down here. And now that works. We have just the outlines as we wanted. The next thing that we need to do is actually have this going into an emission shader. So let's press Shift A and search for an emission shader. Now, we actually want this color to not just be white, but a specific color. So let's actually search for a mix color node. And on that mix color, we're going to actually change the type from mix to color. So that way all the white areas will end up taking the color that we plug into the second value. 
And we're also going to change this factor all the way to one. So this second value has to have some specific colors. So let's take the color output from the Voronoi texture, which is not giving out the smooth F1. So we need the original F1 Voronoi texture, take the color and plug that into the second socket of the color. Now that gives us these random colors, which is exactly what we want, but we want them to be far more saturated than they are. So to increase the saturation, we press shift A and search for a hue saturation value node. Let's go ahead and plug that in just before it enters the socket of the color node. And now we're gonna increase the saturation all the way to two. We're gonna increase the value to two as well. And for the hue, we're actually gonna be keyframing this to have them change through a various range of colors. So that's gonna be great. We can go ahead and increase the strength to something like five or 10 to make them much brighter. And since we're in Eevee, we can always go over to our render properties and switch on blue. Apart from that, just because we're making these really bright to make them look even brighter, we can go all the way down to the color management and change this from filmic to AGX. That just handles the brighter colors better and make them a little bit desaturated. Apart from that, we're gonna change the look from none to very high contrast, which will actually control the bloom quite a bit. Now that we have that set, we can go ahead and start with the animation. So to play around with the animation, we'll go to the output properties and change the frame range to be whatever we want. I want this to be a 20 second animation. So I'm gonna change this to 1200 with a frame rate of 60 frames per second. Apart from that, I'm gonna make this 4K so I'm going to change this to 200%. Remember, if you actually want the 4K 60 FPS rendered animation, you can always take that from my Patreon. You can buy this individual project with the project file and the rendered animation and wallpapers as a digital product from the store. Or you can join my monthly Patreon tiers where we give away every single one of the projects that we do based on which tier you join throughout the month. Based on the tier, you can get either the wallpapers or the animations, or you can get the entire blend file as well. Now that we've set up the animation, we actually need to have this texture coordinate loop based on some specific object. So we're gonna press Shift A and search for an empty and add in a plane axis. With the plane selected, I'm gonna go to the texture coordinate node and just choose empty from the object dropdown. Now the empty is fairly small, so let's select the empty and just scale it up by five units by pressing S5 and enter. Now that we have the empty scaled up, let's go ahead and add in some rotation keyframes for the empty. So let's actually just bring this up by quite a bit, press the back arrow to go to frame zero and then tap I rotation for the empty. That adds in a keyframe. Now let's go all the way to frame 1200 and then press R X 360 and then press R Y 360 and then press R Z minus 360. Now, of course, you could choose different values, but as long as every axis has a rotation of 360, it will loop. So then we tap I and choose rotation. Now we come down here and press T and choose linear so that we get a smooth loop. Now, when you play the animation, you should be able to see the type of rotation that this creates. Now, this is not going to be the actual frame rate at which it's going to render. So if you want to see the actual speed, you can go ahead and change the playback from play every frame to frame dropping, which will give you a realistic idea of how fast this is going to be rotating throughout the animation. Remember, you could have had the Z rotation on the positive axis as well, in which case it would start off slow and then rotate faster towards the end. But I think this works well enough for me for now. So that is the final animation. Another thing that you could do is actually scale the empty up and down. So on frame zero, I'll go ahead and tap I and choose scale. And then I'm just going to expand this side panel by pressing this little arrow mark that'll be present at the left. And then I'll expand the summary, go down to the object transform, and then just select the three keyframes that are created for the object scale. Then I'll press shift D and move them by 1200 frames. Now approximately halfway through, maybe around frame 510, I'll just go ahead and scale it down by a little bit. Let's go with 0 0.8 and then I'll tap I scale. So that way we just get another animation where it actually zooms out and zooms in a bit, which just adds some sort of an effect to it. So that's actually all there is for animation and looping the animation as well. So we can finally start off with the actual background. So before we get to the background, we could render it out just like this, which would be perfectly all right. But I actually want the background to give some reflections. So to be able to see the reflections through this plane, I need this plane to be transparent. So any area that's black, should become transparent. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and add in a mix shader node by pressing shift A, searching for a mix shader and plugging that in after the emission. Now let's press shift A and search for a transparent BSDF and we'll plug that into the second socket. Now, essentially, whenever the factor is zero, it's gonna take in the first socket, which is the emission. And whenever the factor is one, it's gonna take in the second socket transmission. We want it to be the exact opposite. So we'll just plug the transparent into the first socket and the emission in 
into the second socket. Now for the actual factor, let's go ahead and simply use this color output itself as the factor. But if we currently just use this as the factor, we're never going to get the actual emission. We're going to get a bit of the emission because the color output is not a complete one. So to make sure that it is completely one, we're just going to search for a math node. We'll plug that in right there and change this from add to multiply and multiply it by a large value. So maybe something like 10. Now, if we just take a look at what it looks like by control shift clicking it, you can see that we have all the white areas, just white and the black areas, a complete black. Now we actually need these to be transparent because right now they're not transparent. And that's because in our material properties, we have to go down to the blend mode and change the blend mode from opaque to something like alpha clip. That way it actually becomes transparent and you can clearly see that you're able to see the floor underneath the actual plane. So let's create another plane. Let's press shift A and search for a mesh plane and we'll just scale this up. Again, we can scale it up by something like five and then press enter. Now let's press G followed by Z to just bring it below our Voronoi plane. Now let's press zero to go into our camera camera view and with that new plane selected we can press this new button to create a new material we're going to make this very metallic and we're going to reduce the roughness to something like 0.3 for the time being now we don't see any reflections and that's because we have to go to our render properties and switch on screen space reflections to get these really nice looking reflections let's go back to our camera view and this is what it looks like now you can keep the plane as close as you want or you can press gz and just move it further away the further you move it the more distance there will be between the actual plane and the reflections so we'll leave it somewhere like this for now the next thing is we can just switch off overlays and we can go to our world properties and change the background color all the way to black so that we see only the reflections. Next, with our plane selected, make sure that you have your plane 001 selected. You can go ahead and play around with the actual roughness. We don't want it to just be a smooth roughness everywhere. So instead, we're going to press shift A and search for a noise texture. Let's just go ahead and plug this noise texture into a color ramp. So press shift A and search for a color ramp and take the color output and plug that into the factor. Now let's take this color and plug it into the roughness. Now, by default, the scale might be a bit too small so let's increase the scale to something like 10 for the time being and we're gonna bring in the black slider and the white slider to just increase the contrast by quite a bit now that you have the contrast fairly visible we can go ahead and make sure that none of the areas are completely reflective by selecting this black area and changing the value from 0 to something like maybe 0 0.2 so that there's a little bit of roughness everywhere. Similarly, this white can be changed from a value of 1 to a value of maybe 0 0.9 or 0 0.95 to ensure that no area is completely non-reflective. So now that we have that, I think that gives this nice little texture in the background and that just adds quite a bit to this animation. So once you're done with crunching all of that in and making the look exactly the way you want you can also animate the hue values over here so let's just go to frame zero and change the hue to a value of zero and then tap i and then on frame 1200 you can go ahead and just change the hue all the way to one and then tap i again make sure you select this hue saturation value node come down here and press t and choose linear so that you get a smooth loop as it transitions through the various colors as well and that is how you get this organic moving looping sci-fi texture where we get these neon rings to move around it's just a manipulation of the voronoi texture so once again if you haven't seen the voronoi texture I highly recommend checking out that video. But until then, thank you so, so much for watching this video. I have hundreds of other tutorials on my channel, so try and check them out if you want to learn some other cool looping animations as well. I'll try to post videos as often as I possibly can, so subscribe to stay tuned for future uploads. And until the next upload comes, don't forget to keep creating and stay creative.